What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving into the SMG category and covering the VEL 46, also known as the MP7. And starting this off as always, let's have a look at our damage profile. And with this gun, if we're hitting torso shots, it's going to be a 4 to 7 shot kill. However, in order to get that 4 shot kill up close, you need to hit all 4 bullets to the torso and any limb shots will now make it a five shot kill. And it's actually the same story with the five shot kill range. Every single bullet has to hit the torso in order to maintain that five shot kill. Beyond that though, the gun does become a lot more forgiving and it doesn't matter if you're mixing limb shots in. As for headshots, it does require two headshots mixed in with body shots in close to medium ranges in order to reduce the number of shots to kill. And as a result, I'd say you generally don't wanna to focus too much on headshots I mean, if you feel like you could do it comfortably in a situation, go for it. But for the most part, I just focus on hitting those torso shots. As for a rate of fire, this is 952 rounds per minute. And what this means is our time to kill potential with a four shot kill is 189 milliseconds. And that's a very competitive time to kill. It's actually technically a little bit slower than average for an SMG though. So it's definitely not the fastest time to kill, but it is a very competitive time to kill still. And if we do manage to get two headshots mixed in with a body shot, we can get that three shot kill for a time to kill potential of 126 milliseconds, which is very, very fast. As for a bullet velocity, this is quite fast for an SMG. It's almost at assault rifle levels at 540 meters per second. And as a result, within the ranges you should be using this gun, you should have no problem whatsoever with the bullet velocity. As for our range values, as we can see here, our four shot kill range extends out to about 11 meters, which is pretty decent for an SMG. But then the other range drop offs, those are a bit on the lower side for an SMG. So this gun doesn't really excel when we're just talking about raw damage ranges. Then let's get into hip fire, which is very standard for an SMG. No surprises here. It is great at hip firing up close since it is an SMG. And after that, we'll have a look at our idle sway. And honestly, there's not that much idle sway for an SMG. This generally shouldn't be an issue for you within the ranges that you should be using this gun. Now, of course, more importantly, we have our recoil and this gun kicks basically straight upwards, although it does zigzag on its way upwards. It doesn't lean heavy left or right, but there is that little bit of zigzag, little bit of side to side bounce as well. So I'd say this is still fairly accurate for an SMG, but you may struggle to hit those longer range shots. But then after that, let's get into our handling stats. And something very interesting to point out is it looks like the VEL 46 was stealth nerfed at some point between launch and now. Because at launch, I tested an aim down sight time of 200 milliseconds, whereas now it's about 225 milliseconds. So I don't know when this adjustment happened, probably with the season one update, although it wasn't stated in the patch notes with the season one update. In either case, that is our new aim down sight time with this gun. It's 225 milliseconds, whereas our sprint out time is standard for an SMG at 110 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time, which is actually very fast. Then let's get into our reload add time. And this is actually fairly fast for an SMG at 1.4 seconds. And that's a great upside, especially combined with the fact that we have a decent magazine capacity at 40 rounds. And then finally, for the base stats of this gun with no attachments, let's get into our mobility stats. And it turns out across the board, the VEL 46 is just a little bit below average when it comes to mobility. And that is something to be aware of. It's not really like an outlier though. Like it's still within the realm of average here. It's still gonna be better than most of the assault rifles, for instance, but it's just a bit on the slower side for an SMG. And with that, that covers it for all of the base stats of the VEL 46. Now let's get into the barrel attachments though, because there are a lot of barrel attachments with this. And we'll start this off with the ranges. And as we can see here, the first four barrels will improve our damage ranges. The first two by 25%, which is an amazing boost. That's really nice to see. Whereas the others only give us about a 12 and a half percent boost to our range. And then the final two barrels there, those ones both reduce our ranges by about seven and a half percent. Next up with the barrels, let's have a look at how they impact our recoil. And as we can see here, the best barrel when it comes to recoil appears to be the Tango 228 barrel. That one really noticeably cuts down on that vertical magnitude and the jump between bullets. And there's also very little side to side bounce with that compared to some of the others. Honestly though, no matter which one of these barrels you choose, this gun is still gonna be at least reasonably accurate and controllable. Outside of maybe that LM Series 7 barrel, that one does add a decent amount of horizontal recoil that is gonna be a lot more difficult to control and predict. But then finally for the barrels, I wanted to have a look at how these impact our aim down sight speeds. And as we can see here, that Tango 228 barrel, which so far has given us the best benefits to not only recoil, but also ranges, this one does noticeably hurt our aim down sight speed, but it's still somewhat reasonable at least at 275 milliseconds. 
Then the second barrel just destroys our aim down sight speed. I would never even consider using that one. 340 milliseconds for an SMG is ridiculous. And then you can see with all of the other ones, they don't have a massive impact in either direction. It is worth noting with that final barrel, I was getting basically the exact same aim down sight speed as the base aim down sight speed, even though it's supposed to improve it. So I don't doubt that it improves it by a few milliseconds, but the difference with that one is so small that I can't even see any difference whatsoever going frame by frame with video editing software. And with that, we can finally move into some excellent attachment combinations I've got for you guys. But just a heads up right up front here with the VEL46 based on all of my testing, and I spent a lot of time with this, it seems like in most cases, less is more with this gun. For most of the attachment options you'd wanna consider with this, they either destroy your recoil, which you don't want, or they destroy your aim down sight speed, which you also don't want, especially with an SMG. So I hope you guys aren't too surprised. This right here is my preferred build with the VEL46. I know it might seem kind of crazy. I have literally two attachments on this gun. I wanna be very clear that this wasn't just a case of laziness with my optimization for things. I spent a good amount of time trying to optimize attachments and this is what I came up with for a balanced build. All I've got on here is the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt. This is the one that helps with aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and sprint out time. And the only downside here is the enemy can see a red laser visible when I'm aiming down sights. And then I put the Commando foregrip on there, and this one seems to help the most with recoil stabilization. So we get a little bit less side to side bounce, and it just straightens up that recoil plot a little bit. And these attachments together essentially cancel each other out when it comes to aim down sight speed. So we have effectively the same aim down sight speed as the base version of the gun at 225 milliseconds with a bit of a better sprint out time and better aiming stability. And there we go, that's my balance build. This was the best way that I could still keep this handling like an SMG and not having a ridiculously slow aim down sight speed while still maintaining a good amount of accuracy with it. Now, outside of that, I did manage to put together another build as well. This one's made for more ranged play. So we do have that Tango 228 barrel on there, which gives us a 25% boost to our range values, which is very nice and noticeable. It also helps quite a bit with recoil. And then I combine this with the same laser sight we used on the first build. We've got the XRK Sandstorm muzzle, which helps with vertical recoil. And that's gonna help a lot with those initial shots fired because there is a pretty big jump with the base recoil there. And we once again have the Commando foregrip to help with that stabilization. Now, finally on this, we have a 30 round magazine. And I find with this gun, it's okay to drop down to a 30 round magazine because this improves our reload time while also noticeably helping us in the aim down sight department, which this build desperately needs because even with that and that laser attachment counteracting the recoil attachments, we do get quite a slow aim down sight speed for an SMG at 305 milliseconds. So with this kind of gun, it's not designed to be the super aggressive SMG. Instead, it's designed to be a bit more focused on like slower methodical SMG play where you may wanna stretch that range out a little bit. Personally, this is not my preferred build. I'd much rather use the first one. I just wanted to share at least some variety for you guys and also show how difficult it is to put multiple attachments on this gun while still maintaining a half decent aim down sight speed. I really don't know why they decided to stealth nerf the aim down sight speed on this gun because it suddenly makes so many of the attachments on this gun not viable at all. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the VEL46. As for my thoughts on this gun, I actually quite like it. I think it's fairly versatile. It's fairly easy to use as well. It's not a highly competitive gun in my opinion, but throughout my grind with this, I actually found it quite enjoyable and I was generally performing quite well. I think the biggest thing though, is you don't wanna fall into the trap of using too many attachments on this gun. Like I said before, less is more. Of course, that is just my opinion on the VEL46 though, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this gun in those comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link in the description down below to the playlist. I've covered all of the assault rifles so far, and now we're working through SMGs. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.